Oh, oh look at you with your magical cards. I know. <gasps> I and thought it was just the place on the front, but there's something happening oh, on the there's, back. Oh, there's topics on the backs of all oh, of these. Oh, look at that. It's simple. I have a case. It's filled with hundreds of postcards. On the back of each postcard, I've written topics. We pull these cards at random, and then we talk. How old's your son? He's seven. He's seven? Does he understand what mommy does? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mommy makes jokes? Yeah, he's starting to get that more and more. He's sort of known the acting thing, but uh, yeah, the other day, what did he say to me? He had a cold and he's like, oh, mom, I don't feel good. The only thing that would make me feel better is to laugh. And then he pauses and says, but not at your jokes, mom, because your jokes are for adults and adults are weird and they drink coffee. And then I don't know if he said this to make That's it... That's pretty wise, actually. I know. I don't know if he said this to make it better or worse, but then he paused again and he goes, but you're not a weird, weird adult, Mom. You're like a young, young senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> he said that? So he's crushing it, pretty much. Oh, my gosh. He's getting it from you. Yeah. Here. And then I, uh, you know, of course, being a comic and up in my head all the time and not being able to show emotion or enjoyment of any sort, I just turned to him. I stopped what I was doing. I think I was washing dishes, and I said, that was really funny. I'm a lot more career driven than I realized I was. It's kind of a, a, I'm realizing the complexities of how I've structured my life. Uh, I think especially with what I do, there's a lot that rides on like, oh, maybe someone will like me for this thing. And now I'm sort of settling into, oh, I, I can sort of do what I want and dictate that a little bit more and have my family time. And, and that's, that's a good thing. It so, doesn't have to be about like, oh, maybe I'll get that big job and that big house and, and you know, people will see me and... We all have a need for attention. Yes. Whether people are willing to admit it or not, we all, it's this, the name of this game is Look thing. At Me. It's a normal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Look At Me. Well, I've been thinking back over this too because obviously a lot of people recognize me from the show 24 because it's a worldwide massive success. So I've done tons of work and only comedy before that, but that's sort of like the biggest benchmark thing that people know. Once you have a success like that, you know, things sort of change. You buy a house and I'm like, oh, I guess I'm an actor now. You know, I learned how to dress up fancy and, and you know, it was an amazing experience that really shaped my life. And looking back on it, I'm sort of like, how was I not immediately on another TV show? Like, how did I not just get plugged into that and like keep the TV money coming in? And it ended up being a good thing because I have steadily worked, but I haven't had that next thing that I, you know, can invest in and that I'm, you know, that really is, is a challenge to me. So that kind of brought me back to what I always did, which was performing live. And I think if I had been plugged on, you know, another hour long drama, I would not have had the opportunity to do what I'm doing now, which is, is very different. You know, it's a very different experience to uh, go on the road and do comedy. Sometimes I'll get somewhere and I'll plan to shop, even if it's for underwear or t-shirts. That's a whole other thing, but uh, I, sometimes I'll, my suitcase will be too full. So I'll get a FedEx box and I'll mail myself dirty laundry. I've never said this out loud before. It's, it doesn't seem that, it doesn't seem that smart or like why, this is, it makes, really doesn't make any sense. When I'm going home, my suitcase is lighter and that makes me feel better. So if I bought something, then I'm filling that space, but I feel like I'm like, do have you, less stuff and that, I like that. Do you ever forget that you FedEx something to yourself and then you get excited because you get a package and it's just your dirty clothes? No, but I try to trick my, um, no, I'm not mean enough to do that. I could have just like put my son's name on it and he'd be so excited and it's like, oh, oh. mom's dirty laundry. <laughs> I suppose there's like a half a second of, oh, oh. That's right. Everybody likes getting a package. And I don't know if you're like me in this sense, but do you have Amazon Prime? Yes. Have you gotten to the point now where packages are just arriving at your door and you forgot what you've even ordered? Yes, but no, that's not me. That's my husband, Matthew. He, a couple years ago, he broke the bones in his foot and that's where he learned how to online shop because <laughs> his foot was up. And now he just, it's very natural for him. He does it for any occasion he does it for his stuff he needs for work for our son like oh you bought him 
socks or whatever. Uh, I am not as versed as I need to be. I feel like I've bought athletic wear and it doesn't fit the way I want it to. And then I'm too lazy to send it back and then that's a waste. And that is a waste. But I will say going into regular stores now, I'm super annoyed because I'm just like, what? I'm yeah. supposed to walk around and look at things? Like, Where no, just give it to reviews? me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just give it to me quickly. I don't have time to physically be here. It's and so dangerous though, the online shopping, because I shattered the carafe, <laughs> just the glass carafe of my old coffee maker, which and was a Perfectly fine coffee maker. Oh, and I was like, you I should get a ten dollar carafe. Yeah. And I was like, well, let's see what else there is out there. And next thing you know, I've got the Cadillac of coffee yeah. makers. Yeah. I didn't need that. No. Three days ago, I was fine with my Black and Decker. Yeah. So it's dangerous because Your it's Black and Decker clay. coffee maker. Yeah. That's funny. Probably what suffers the most is my social life, which is okay because I, I do get to socialize when I go out to the club at night. <laughs> but it is it's a strange sensation to be you know. Cuddle, cuddle up with my son reading Harry Potter and then like, I'm gonna go to work now. And then just, you know, go out at night and have this whole double life. But I've sort of carved out going out at night, getting up early and then trying to take a midday nap. It doesn't always work. Do you have a minivan? I don't. I did have a, a Mazda little SUV, but now I've uh, got a Mazda sedan. So I'm really sporty in that. Have you considered a minivan? I considered it, yeah, but I, I don't really need it. They're we have one awesome, kid. Bro. Are they? I like that, that Honda Odyssey. So like, like, got if, all the bells and whistles. If they didn't look so damn stupid, yeah. they're great cars and they're so practical. Yeah, they're pretty cush on the inside. Yeah, like if I didn't look like an asshole, I would totally drive a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to have a whole outfit to coordinate with your minivan. Like dad jeans? Yeah, really commit to it. Really like commit blue to blocker. It. Maybe, the the maybe. blue blockers, and then I would have Disney movies playing, even though there'd be nobody in there. Oh, that's just creepy. What was the last concert you went to, and what bands do you like? Oh, I haven't been to a concert in a really long time. Uh, you know, one of the last times I went to see live music was when I was here, and I was taken to the Claremont Lounge. That, for live music, that's live dancing. Well, I was lucky enough, there was, there was music there, and that's what kept me there. Because if it had just been the dancing, it's a little disturbing. Uh, it's sort of funny for a while. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, we can leave. Like, we don't need to hang out here. But uh, it was actually a real nice hang. Okay. I, I've had this conversation with another uh, stand-up comic before about the Claremont Lounge. I would describe it as uh, old ladies, like, just, like, tying their tits around PBR cans. They all seem to have a similar body type. Like they're all sort of wide with very, very huge breasts as I remember it. And they just, uh, they like to strip and they found their home and the people there let, I guess, like to enjoy that on a certain level. But it also is, it's super vibey, the bar. Do you remember what your first concert was ever? Uh, my first concert was um, yes, I do. My parents took me to see Neil Sedaka, Neil Diamond. There That's... was sort of like three when I was younger. Who was the third one? Like monumental. I remember Neil Diamond was like... Was it another Neil? Blew my mind. No, it wasn't another Neil. I don't remember the Neil Sedaka. In fact, I feel like I'm making that up. I definitely remember Neil Diamond and it was exciting and like you were standing up and clapping and Were the singing. women going crazy for him? Yeah, I mean, I was really young, so I kind of just, all I remember is like, it being loud and sort of him and just darkness around me and just a lot of amazing energy because it was something that I knew those songs going into it. So it was super, super exciting because I was really into uh, just the radio, like Detroit uh, soft rock radio when I was younger. We yeah. used to listen to by the pool. Do you have any tattoos? I have one tiny tattoo. Let's over talk here. about your tattoo. Um, do you have tattoos? I don't, but I'm gonna get one. You are? <laughs> yeah. What are you gonna I, get? I want to get um, here, I think, because that's where all good douchebags get it. <laughs> I want to get um, the state outline of Arizona, where I'm from. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I have a little doodle of a pretzel heart. It's like that big. A pretzel heart? Yeah. What was the story behind it, though? Um, I used to uh, date comedian David Cross in the 90s. Do you know him? An Atlanta boy. 
Uh, that's right, of course. Um, I think, I, in fact, I think my first time here was with him years ago. Uh, we were drunk on Hollywood Boulevard, and that was a doodle that I used to put in paintings. So we both just got that on a whim. So he has it too? He has it, but he covered it up when we broke up. Yeah. And I think that was, now he has a bunch of tattoos. He had it completely covered up like you would never know in a million years it was there. Wow, that's funny. And I just left mine. I never covered it up. Do you want to get any more? No? No. I, I kind of admire and love people who have them. I like to look at them. But there's also this part of me that's really conservative and just, you know, like, why would you do that to your body? Especially when you're 18 and then you, you know, you have so much more life to live and then you're going to be like, oh, I got that, you know, yeah. hot dog, got that Oreo cookie. I guess it's a mistake if you call a mistake me being completely not prepared for the job that I had. And it was a scene with Gary Shandling and, you know, I don't remember what the line was, but let's just say, because I played the talent booker on the Larry Sanders show, you know, I had some line like, all right, I'll get the names to you later. And they were filming and he stopped and he looked at me and he goes, what did you mean by that? And I said, I'll, I just, he said, or no, he said, well, like, what, are you, what were you thinking when you said that? And I said, um, just, I just said, oh, I'll get the names to you later. And he was like, yeah, but what was, what's going on with you? Like, what are, what are you actually thinking about? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. And in that moment, he, I got schooled on subtext, and it changed me forever because, <laughs> which I, I really respond to a little shame, but he did it in the most loving way of like, kind of called me out on the fact that I was just saying the line with no, nothing huh. going on in my interior world. And then I was like, oh, like that's the point of acting. You don't, like, why would you want to just hear somebody simply saying with nothing else going on. So um, that's when I started paying attention and- uh, That's a fantastic doing, story. Doing a little bit more work and you know, it's so, it's so much richer and more fun, obviously when there's, and there, you know, I'm sure it was acting subtext, but without being conscious of it. And right. he, in that moment, he was like, yeah, like you can think about this. Like that's what makes things good and interesting is when you've made those choices. And it's an interesting uh, kind of look into him too, that he cared enough and oh that he God. was noticing these things. He's ama he was amazing at that. You know, I've wow. seen a lot of tributes about him lately. He's really touched a lot of people in acting and, and, and someone's emotional state and the comedy coming from that was very, very important to him. Yeah, one of the last things he did was like uh, comedians in cars getting coffee with Jerry Seinfeld and there's a really funny repartee between them where Car uh, Gary's kind of um, on the side of that comedy comes from your emotional state. And then Jerry Seinfeld was like, or you could just have talent. 